our e-live congregation with us. Um, I also, presumably, uh, we are greeting those who are seeing this as a recording or slightly on delay, and we're lovely to have you all with us in whatever way that you are joining us. Now, this is the beginning of the Methodist New Year. So the first thing is, to folks at home, we've already been wishing each other Happy New Year here, uh, actually, in the, in the chapel. But uh, to all of you at home, we uh, wish you a Happy New Methodist Year. Um, but it's also the new school year as well, isn't it? Um, and traditionally, depending on whether you want to celebrate the new year in January, or whether you want to celebrate the new, new Methodist year in September, we have always had a tradition in the Methodist Church about making a covenant, making a promise um, about following Jesus throughout the year. So I thought I'd start this morning, and I will uh, greet a few people at, at home uh, in a minute when, when, uh, when we have some messages and so on, but one of the things that we do is that, that we make this promise and every year we renew our promise in order to remind ourselves about our commitment to being Christians. But much like any New Year resolutions, I suspect that we don't necessarily manage to keep them and certainly don't manage to keep them in full uh, you, you know, we, we fall short of the promises that, that we make. I asked the congregation here in the space before whether any of them had any good stories about promises that they'd made and broken, and literally no one ran forward, so I'm assuming that nobody here has ever made a promise and broken it. We do, as human beings, we want to be able to promise the earth, but we can't always manage it. So, um, and, and sometimes that's not our fault, you know. Sometimes we do it for good reasons. I was, I was talking earlier about my, um, my mother's uh, promises, which were always, uh, always came with a sort of a codicil. So, for instance, her promise that there was, there was nothing in the potato turned out, you know, there was always something hidden in the potato, and it was usually broccoli. Um, but I wondered, I mean, on a more serious note, we do set out each year, don't we, and think, well, I'd like to do it better. I'd really like to do this year a bit better than I did it last year. Um, if you're just joining us, the congregation, for folks at home, you won't be able to see, but congregation members are coming in uh, as, we, as we are talking. So if you hear them chatting or gossiping amongst themselves or whatever, that's, that's fine. Um, just know that that's what that, that sound is. We're going back to singing today. We, we're going to have all our hymns will be sung in the space. Obviously at home you've been able to sing all the hymns all the time, but here as long as we keep our masks on while we're singing and so on, we can... We can, we can sing the hymns, which is, which is exciting, and makes us feel a bit more Methodist. I, I always used to have this sort of really contradictory feeling about the covenant service. Um, first of all, I knew someone, and you, you might well have said this, I, I knew someone when I was younger who used to say very firmly, I never make a promise I can't keep. I never make a promise I can't keep. And I thought, yeah, well, that's very worthy. That's a, that's a good idea. But actually, in practice, we wouldn't make any promises at all then, would we? I mean, because you don't know if you're going to be able to keep a promise. We hope. We pray that we can keep uh, a promise. So I was trying to think of, a, of an example of things. I, I'm try, I, do you know what? I don't know whether they're on the feed anywhere this morning, but if my children are out there, I will bet you 10 to 1 they've got stories about the things that we promised them for what was going to happen to them and their journey in life and all the rest of it. And I'm pretty sure that they will also have the stories of how we you know, managed to let them down and not fulfill those promises um, and also I, I, I seem to remember flippantly at one point and I think it's cost me an arm and a leg so far 
Um, at some point, when we moved stations, when we came here, uh, no, when we moved in one of our previous incarnations as ministers, uh, when, we, when we moved, I said to the children, I promise that wherever we end up, because we had to ask them, you know, are you okay with us moving? Wherever we move to, we promise that we will make sure you've got the equipment so that you can stay in touch with your friends that you've had to leave behind. And at the time, we, I didn't think about what that meant in terms of cost. Because that means that our children have been well equipped with mobile phones and laptops and all the rest of it. The result of which I think as a church and as KLH together here, we've benefited from because of course they were the ones who um, originally showed us how to do the online stuff. Because guess what? They, you know, they're really good on their laptops and their computers. So there was, a, there was an upside to it. But you know, that promise was expensive. That was an expensive promise. Um, you know, I mean, we all know what a phone con contract can look like, you know. Now multiply it by three and you're sort of thinking, crumbs, that's, you know. But, but promises are expensive, aren't they? Sometimes. Um, I, I, was, I, yeah, I, I was just thinking of what, what sort of promises. I mean, we think of promises. One of the pictures I used was of, of a wedding. When we, when we promise to marry someone and we, 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 well, I mean, that can be an expensive promise, can't it? I mean, I don't think our wedding was particularly expensive, but I remember somebody putting out online recently that an average wedding now costs, anyone know what it was? I can't I remember, uh, 37,000 or something ridiculous. I pointed out they could come and have a wedding here, we'd do it much cheaper tea and buns in the hall afterwards, you know. Uh, there's a few greetings from folks at home, so I'm just going just to uh, share those before we start the service, uh, the, the service bit proper, as it were. Uh, good morning from Kings Langley, Helen Taylor says. Um, Caroline Metton, good morning to everyone. Uh, Celia says, um, Andrew's a bit jerky. <laughs> I, it, it's just... It's just a, just a rough night, I guess. Um, uh, 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 what else have we got here? Uh, Jenny's rebooting. Um, good morning from Pam Hadley. Lovely to have you with us. Um, uh, who says wants to thank our amazing creator for her marvellous improvement after an operation on Friday. She's home and happy. What a wonderful message. Thank you for that, Pam. Hello. Uh, glad that you can be with us. Uh, Penny Franklin, greetings from isolation in Abbots Langley. Uh, you've frozen, but your voice is clear. No, I'm just not moving much today, that's all. Um, there's no service at Abbots this morning, apparently, uh, so some members are joining here. Very welcome to everybody at Abbots Langley. Um, and uh, good morning to Leslie Crouch as well. So we've got some folks joining us online, so it's lovely to have you with us. And whatever way that you are joining in, um, let me start the covenant service by saying, not only are you all welcome to join in, but the foundations of the Methodist Church have been shook, as my daughter might say. They have been moved because now, if you join in live with us at home and you actually have some bread and wine, communion is communion here and it's communion there. It's communion wherever you are. So the Methodist Conference has said we're having a sort of a, a moratorium on online communion and we can do it. Uh, and if you join in at home. So the, the, the next bit of the service, I think Andrew will play us into the service with a bit of music. As you listen to Andrew, Andrew's dulcet playing, um, maybe grab yourself um, some bread and some wine so that you can join in with our covenant service, which will start... Which will, Honestly, I can't speak this morning, which will start soon. Thank you.
Well, good morning and welcome to our covenant service where we make our promises to try and follow Jesus Christ more closely and where we offer up to God our promise that we will try harder. Every year we make this covenant promise. I think last year was probably the first time that we didn't have a covenant service uh, in the church for a long, long time. And we've had this on delay um, really since the middle of the, the, the middle of the lockdowns. And we make the promises every year because promises are hard to keep and we always fail. So we remake the promise the following year because just because we messed up once doesn't mean that we give up, does it? I mean, I know we always say, and it's a bit of a cliche, but you say, you know, uh, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Well, the covenant service is very much that. If you don't, some of the language that you're going to hear as part of the covenant service is quite complicated. And if at home you find yourself thinking, I don't fully understand what I just said or what I was just involved in in the service, don't worry, half the people in the congregation here will be feeling exactly the same way. And the other half will have studied the Methodist CPD rules in great detail. We make the promises because we want to try harder, but we don't give up because we fail. If we did, I mean, none of our promises would be worth terribly much, would they? Because, I mean, we mess them up and then we say. It's, it's, it's the natural thing. It's the big instinct, isn't it, to, to, to do it. You say, I've messed up. I'm sorry. But I'm going to give it another shot. Or just give me another week and I'll have it done. Or in my case, listen, I know the last three times I said it. <laughs> I didn't get round to it, but I will this time, this time, I will do it. So, we gather to worship God with all our hearts and all our souls and all our minds, and we'll begin congregationally to be able to sing together, and we'll sing Morning Has Broken, 136, if you're using the book. This is an exciting moment because we're singing all our hymns this morning. So we sing together, 136. Congregation, feel free to stand and sing as and if you are able, or to sit and sing if you prefer. So we will sing together, 136. Thank you, boss. <laughs> Do take a seat. Oh, that was quite, it was quite moving, wasn't it? All of us together. The covenant liturgy begins. The gathering of the people of God. Let us pray. Glory to the Father, the God of love who created us, who continually preserves and sustains us, 
who has loved us with an everlasting love and given us the light of the knowledge of his glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Blessed be God forever. Glory to Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who, though he was rich, yet for our sake became poor and was tested in every way as we are, yet without sin, who proclaimed the good news of the kingdom and was obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross, who was raised from the dead and is alive forever and has opened the kingdom of heaven to all who trust in him, who is seated at God's right hand in glory and will come to be our judge. Blessed be God forever. Glory to the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, by whom we are born into the family of God and made members of the body of Christ, whose witness confirms us, whose wisdom teaches us, whose power enables us, who will do for us more than we can ask or think. Blessed be God forever. To the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be praise and glory forever. Amen. God of grace, through the mediation of your Son, you call us into a new covenant. Help us, therefore, to draw near with faith and join ourselves in a perpetual covenant with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we're going to turn to Scripture and our readings, and we have... Two, uh, two readings from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament, and I shall simply ask that the readers come up in turn, um, and I'm going to look to our technical crew and say, that one, and they will be speaking from, from the other microphone. The first reading, can you hear me? Yes. The first reading is taken from Exodus, chapter 24, verses 3 to 11. When Moses went and told the people all the Lord's words and laws, they responded with one voice, everything the Lord has said we will do. Moses then wrote down everything the Lord had said. He got up early the next morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up 12 stone pillars representing the 12 tribes of Israel. Then he sent young Israelite men and they offered burnt offerings and sacrificed young bulls as fellowship offerings to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in bowls and the other half he splashed against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it to the people. They responded, we will do everything the Lord has said. We will obey. Moses then took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and the 70 elders of Israel went up and saw the God of Israel. Under his feet was something like a pavement made of lapis lazuli, as bright as blue as the sky. But God did not raise his hand against these leaders of the Israelites. They saw God, and they ate and drank. Amen. The second reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I, covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. 
I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Amen. The New Testament lesson is from St. John's Gospel, chapter 15, reading the first 10 verses. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. Amen. Just before I, um, uh, when I planned the service, I uh, left deliberately out the word sermon. And the reason I left it out was to remind me that with all the other words that are in the covenant service, we don't need a full sermon. But just before the next hymn, I'm going to sneak a few words in, if that's right. And the reason I'm sneaking these words in is because of the nature of a promise and a covenant. If we make a promise, we quite often say a promise is a two-way street. And certainly in Christianity, we've always got the two-way street that when we promise to follow, we know that God went before us and promised to love us regardless. So the covenant is formed between God perfect and us imperfect. But actually in many ways in the Methodist church, there is a, a promise is a three-way street. Now, we all know how some of those work out, but, I mean, that's why we ended up with how many roundabouts in Hemel Hempstead? Um, there is a three-way street, and that is, is that I promise to follow God, but God has promised to love me whether I manage to follow him properly or not. But even better than that is that as we make our promises, one of the things that we do is we make our promises together. That's why we do it as a covenant service. That's why we join in together, both here at home, online, why we send all the words round. Because when we say together the promises that we make in the covenant, we do so to and with each other. So we promise to help each other to get through the promises. Actually, it doesn't even necessarily matter if you didn't understand the promise you were making in the first place. Because there'll always be somebody else in a Methodist congregation to come along and go, oh, I know what it was about. I'll help you out. And that's how promises should work, isn't it? I mean, we make them because we care and we love and we want to make a difference. I promise this year to do better in trying to save the environment. If I make that promise on my own, it's a pretty pointless promise. 
If I go out and try and save the environment on my own, it's not going to make a huge difference. My recycling bin is probably going to be a bit fuller, but actually the impact on the world is going to be fairly minimal. If we all do it, hey presto, the world starts to change, something starts to happen. So when this covenant promise, and there's all sorts of analogies, aren't there? I mean, the, the, the readings that we've just heard use various different symbolism to talk about promises and covenants, fruit and vines. You can probably pick your own, pick your own. Do you know, sometimes I don't think these things through. Pick your own fruit. Pick, choose, choose anything you like, the way that you garden. You know, if things aren't well rooted in the garden, they don't grow well. So we root them in our promises. We're also rooted in our history. Tomorrow is the Jewish, uh, um, uh, the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah, and that's, that's tomorrow. And we are rooted in the Jewish faith as well. We are, we are obviously all connected back to the same God. So when we make that promise, we make promises together, historically, physically, with our friends, with the whole of the wider church, never was there a more relevant time to have a covenant service than now as we go forward into whatever this new normal is going to look like. Because we make the promises with the real intention that we will go forward together. Will we always be successful? No. Will we keep trying? Yes. Will we be doing it on our own? No. And the biggest part of all is that we do everything with God with us. That's quite enough of that. I shall now uh, ask Andrew if we can have the next hymn. And we're going to sing together, Father, we love you, uh, which is number six if you're using the books. Father, we love you, we worship and adore you. Do take a seat. As we enter into the covenant itself and the covenant promises, um, I just note so that you're aware that folks are joining in. Uh, my wife has sent a message. Uh, please don't preach so long. You're. Oh no. Um, she's. <laughs> she, she's saying. <clears throat> she said she's so fabulous to hear the congregation singing. 
So thank you, congregation. Uh, greeting Sam in Wales. Sam and Lee, lovely to have you with us. They've sent us uh, Welsh greetings. We're even including Wales, of course, in our covenant and our covenant promise we share together. Uh, good morning, beautiful people, Benjamin Lane says. And that's a good thing to remind us of. Thank you, Benjamin. Yes, we are beautiful people, aren't we? Do you remember that sermon? Look at the person next to you. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, we celebrate God's love. We celebrate God's love in the people that we see around us. Um, so yes, uh, lovely to have everyone with us at home. Lovely to have you with us here in the space. And we go forward with the words of the covenant. Um, and as I say, they're not, they're not easy words, but they are important words. God made a covenant with the people of Israel calling them to be a holy nation, chosen to bear witness to his steadfast love by finding delight in the law. The covenant was renewed in Jesus Christ our Lord, in his life, work, death and resurrection. In him all people may be set free from sin and its power and united in love and obedience. In this covenant God promises us new life in Christ. For our part, we promise to live no longer for ourselves, but for God. We meet, therefore, as generations have met before us, to renew the covenant which bound them and binds us to God. So let us then seek forgiveness for the sin by which we have denied God's claim on us. Let us pray. God of mercy, hear us as we confess our sins. For the sin that has made us slow to learn from Christ, reluctant to follow him, and afraid to bear the cross, Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has caused the poverty of our worship, the formality and selfishness of our prayers, our neglect of fellowship and the means of grace, and our hesitating witness for Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has led us to misuse your gifts, evade our responsibilities, and fail to be good stewards of your creation, Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has made us unwilling to overcome evil with good, tolerant of injustice, quick to condemn, and selfish in sharing your love with others, Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. And we say together, have mercy on me, O God, in your constant love, in the fullness of your mercy, blot out my offenses, wash away all my guilt, cleanse me from my sin, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me, give me the joy of your help again and strengthen me with a willing spirit. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, to all who truly repent, this is his gracious word. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. And as the tradition has been for many, many years, we sing together, Come Use the Grace Divine 549, if you're using the hymn books, the uh, Covenant Hymn.
remain standing. Um, obviously, if you need to sit, sit. Beloved in Christ, let us again claim for ourselves this covenant which God has made with his people and take upon us the yoke of Christ. This means that we are content that he appoint us our place and work and that he himself be our reward. Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, others are difficult. Some bring honor, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclination and material interests. Others are contrary to both. In some we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given to us in Christ who strengthens us. Therefore, let us make this covenant of, covenant of God our own. Let us give ourselves to him, trusting in his promises and relying on his grace. Lord God, Holy Father, since you have called us through Christ to share in the gracious covenant, we take upon ourselves with joy the yoke of obedience. And for love of you, engage ourselves to seek and do your perfect will. We are no longer our own, but yours. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full, let me be empty, let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours, so be it. And the covenant now made on earth let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. As we have entered this covenant, not for ourselves alone, but as God's servants and witnesses, let us pray for the church and for the world. Loving God, hear us as we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Make us all one, that the world may believe. Inspire and lead all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Establish justice and peace among all people. Have compassion on all who suffer from any sickness, grief or trouble. Deliver them from their distress. We praise you for all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. Bring us all to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray in silence for our own needs and for those of others. Lord our God, you have helped us by your grace to make these prayers. And you have promised through Christ our Lord that when two or three agree in his name, you will grant what they ask. Answer now your servants' prayers according to their needs. In this world, grant them that we may truly know you, and in the world to come, graciously give us eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come into the communion service, um, it says on the order of service 
uh, that we all stand again. I'm, I'm going to suggest that since I will be bringing the elements to you and so on, that uh, we don't need to stand again. You did some standing for the covenant and for the hymns. Um, I will just say coming into this, it, is, it always amuses me. You know, at the start of the service, I was trying to say how it's very human to fail to make promises. And actually, we say all those words, and we've now made our promise to follow Christ for the year ahead. In the process of doing so, did you notice one of the great ironies of the words in this service? That we promise, in part of it, to not make our prayers too formal during the most formal service that the Methodist Church actually has in its worship book. The poverty of our prayers and their formality, and then we have this great big formal service. Even the writers of the covenant couldn't make the promise that they set out to make. That's how tough it is. The Lord has made an everlasting covenant of peace with his people, the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God our Father, fountain of goodness, creator of all that is, you have made us in your own image. You have given us life and reason and love for one another, setting in our hearts a hunger for you. In darkness, you are our light. In adversity and temptation, our strength. You bear patiently with our folly and sin, granting us your law to guide us and your prophets to renew our faith. In the fullness of time, you came to us in love and mercy, in Jesus Christ, your living word, full of grace and truth. He lived among us, declaring your forgiveness and revealing your wisdom in works of mercy and in his word of power. For us, he suffered and died upon the cross, by death, destroying death. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your people. Gather together in every time and place to glorify your holy name. With them and all the company of heaven, we join in the unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, pour out your spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the night in which he was betrayed took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Lord, we obey his command with this bread and this cup, by which we recall his death and resurrection, the source of our life and salvation. Grant that we, who share in this holy sacrament, may be, may be united by your Spirit and grow into perfect love. Bring us with those who have done your will in every age into the light of your presence and the joy of your kingdom, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. 
as our Saviour taught his disciples, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As part of the breaking of bread, and because we continue to struggle with the pandemic, uh, obviously I will be not speaking as I come to you. I will say the words here, then I will bring the elements to you in your seats and the communion stewards will collect your glasses and so on at the end. To anyone at home, this is the moment you need to grab your bread and wine as well so that you can share and join in um, as we proceed with the communion and the distribution of the elements. For those of you again, especially if you're at home, just be aware that as I wander off, and to distribute the elements and you're sharing together in the elements at home um, Andrew will be very kindly playing us some some music but there will be a bit where it might feel like there's not a lot happening I don't know how that works on the internet I know how it works here is we all have a meaningful moment and we all sit here in prayer and thought or try to remember what we did about lunch so as we sit here, I don't know what you will be able to do at home, but please try and take the opportunity to reflect on the promises and on uh, your faith and on the journey that we go on together. The things of God's holy people, Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, glory to God the Father. Jesus said, I am the bread of life, those who come to me shall not hunger, and all those who believe in me shall never thirst. Draw near with faith. His body given for you.
take and eat. His blood shed for you. Take and drink. Let's say together the prayer after communion. And we say together... Faithful God, with these holy gifts, you have fed us and strengthened us. In Jesus Christ, your Son, guide us on our way, that with all your faithful people, we may come to share the feast of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, I, I couldn't resist, as we come to end the end of our covenant service, to have, of course, the hymn, O Jesus, I Have Promised, uh, which is 563. So uh, stand, sit, however you wish to do so. Uh, obviously, at home, you can do what you like. So, O Jesus, I Have Promised, 563.
Well, all I can say is I can't believe we're not all dancing. That was, uh, thank you, Andrew, lovely. Um, that, was, that was getting me going. Uh, it's been wonderful to share this morning together. Obviously, we are still um, probably sensible not to be holding hands around the congregation like we used to do. But we do, as always, reach out in love to one another. And um, we'll say the grace, and then I'll, sh I'll share a blessing to send you out to, okay? So uh, we share in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>